Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark Review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy. I'm your former Hallmark hater. Ooh, not even for now added on. <laughs> it was a good weekend. It was a good weekend. <laughs> Today we're discussing Mystery on Mistletoe Lane, part of Hallmark's Miracles of Christmas series. If you want to connect with us outside of the podcast, we'd love for you to follow us on Instagram. You can find us at Girls Gone Hallmark and at Megan and Wendy. Jump into our Facebook group, Girls Gone Hallmark. We're just left and right new people. So I think it's a really nice group. And if you want to come and talk about movies and share your opinion without getting you know, beat up for it. It's a great group. Girls. It is a great group. Lots of good conversation about this weekend's movies. If you want to talk about that, more things to talk about. Big, exciting news for not just the Hallmark universe, but entertainment fans in, across the world. Mm -hmm. SAG-AFTRA Studios and the AMPTP reached a tentative agreement and the 118-day strike. So they will be voting starting this week. The word is it is a landmark achievement for the union in what I've seen shared, people are very happy with the outcome. My favorite part about all of this, though, is the second they reached a tentative agreement is that all of our Hallmark stars were finally able to share promos for what they've been working on, stuff that's already aired, stuff that's coming out. What a bummer to work so hard on something and then just have to sit on your hands when it comes out. For real. So I love that they're excitedly sharing. We're getting some behind the scenes clips. We're getting some fun bonus content from our stars. And they're able to share the work that they've been creating. So check out Instagram. Check out your favorite Hallmark stars because odds are they're talking about what they're working on. It's almost a little overwhelming to me as a consumer on Instagram mm. because, because like every actor is like, posting about their projects. And I was like, wow, you really didn't realize how quiet it had been. Yes. So listen to this. On November 30th, Benjamin Ayers is launching a Romance University pop-up shop in Toronto, you know, to, to sell his Romance University merch. Yeah. And Laura Vandervoot and Brittany Bristow will also be there in attendance to meet fans. Now, I got to tell you, they came out with a Romance University Christmas hoodie that is real cute, but it's also $60. Ooh. I mean, I, I almost kind of wanted it, but I would only wear it during one time of the year, you know? I mean, did you spend sixty dollars on a 1989 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. cardigan? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut up over there. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think sometimes we spend the money on fun things. I know. I agree. Uh, they're really cute. Then on December second, Benjamin Ayers and a few of his friends are hosting a fan experience at Martini Town in Langley, British Columbia. So the event is called. It's like supposed to be like a fan experience and it's called martini town merry and bright and it is being held at a city themed back lot where many of the hallmark movies are filmed at mm -hmm. and there's going to be panel discussions with benjamin paul campbell kimberly sustad victor webster and a whole bunch of other people and i thought this would be so fun to go to if it wasn't in Canada. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm sure it's still fun in Canada, just geographically undesirable for us, I think is what That's you're saying. Exactly. No Canada shade. <laughs> no, not, not at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would um, totally go to this. If it were in LA, we would go in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Because I wanted to share that the Warner Brothers backlot does something during the holiday season. They they take the area where they filmed Gilmore Girls mm -hmm. and they recreate the town of Stars Hollow. I went last holiday season and really geeked out. Like it was so fun to be in like this fictional town yeah. that you have watched for so many years. So I, I just think that's so cool. And what I read is Martini Town. That's what it's like a back lot. It, Martini Town, the name throws me because of Martini, but it's right, right. like a bar. Yes. You know? <laughs> anyway, from December 1st through January 1st, fans are able to visit this back lot at Martini Town, and it's going to be all decked out for Christmas. I so love it. I love feel it. like you're in your own Hallmark movie. 
Like you're in your own mistletoe manor situation. Yes, exactly. Oh my goodness. So fun. Shall we chat mystery on Mistletoe Lane? Let's do it. Let's hear a synopsis. All right. New to town, Heidi Wicks and her kids discover a Christmas mystery in their historic home. Local handyman and historian David helps along the way, finding his own surprising connection. This movie stars Erica Sarah and Victor Webster. Alan Harmon directed. He has 40 previous directing credits, plus another 43 assistant director credits. His last movie for Hallmark was Fourth Down in Love from earlier this year. He also directed Mingle All the Way, You're Baking Me Crazy, and Never Kiss a Man in a Christmas Sweater, among others. I just, I'm not going to say anything else, except I wonder why Wendy chose those three as the movies he's also directed. I've never seen You're Baking Me Crazy. Neither have I. <laughs> That's the one of these things might not belong here in that. Yeah, those other two movies have not been my favorites. Correct. So... Mark Hefty wrote this script. He has 17 writing credits, including some movies we really liked here at Girls Gone Hallmark, Unexpected Grace, A Dickens of a Holiday, My Christmas Family Tree, and Beverly Hills Wedding. He's also the writer for the upcoming Nikki DeLoach movie, A World Record Christmas, which BTW I saw a commercial for this weekend and cried. I am shocked by that. A, not a crier. I'm a crier. Wendy's not a crier. (laughs) Also, BTW, rumor has it that that movie dropped early on the Hallmark Movies Now app. So if you want to watch it now and not wait until this weekend, you can do so if you have Hallmark Movies Now. Victor Webster stars as David Avery. Webster has 90 acting credits, including The Wedding Veil Movies, Matchmaker Mysteries, A Christmas Cookie Catastrophe, in which the movie poster creators did him dirty, and Summer Mm -hmm. Villa. He also played Mike in 11 episodes of Working Moms, which you can stream on Netflix. And let me tell you, if you only know Victor Webster from Hallmark, I suggest just give him, watch his first appearance on Working Moms. It's a totally different side of him. He's an absolute jerk, but a real hot one. Mm -hmm. Erica Sarah plays Heidi Wicks. She has 50 acting credits, including quite a bit of voice work. She is probably best known for a TV series called Eureka. That ran from 2006 to 2012 on the Sci-Fi Channel. You know, I didn't watch that. (laughs) This appears to be her first Hallmark project. Juliet Hawk plays teen daughter Annie. She has seven previous acting credits, including a winning team and Christmas at the Golden Dragon for Hallmark. She also looks to have a small role in the Paul Campbell movie Magic in Mistletoe later this season. Logan Pierce plays son Garrett. This is his first Hallmark movie. Oh, Mary Beth Manning plays Linda, sweet Linda. She has 21 acting credits, and this is her second Hallmark movie. She was previously in the TV movie Laker Girls, starring Tina Yothers in 1990, and one episode of an ABC after-school special called My Mother Was Never a Kid in 1981. Are you familiar with this Laker Girls movie? Gosh, I don't know if my brain is manufacturing memories because I'm, like, envisioning Tina Yothers in a cheerleading, but no, I don't think I am. Yeah, it was like Tina Yothers. I can't remember if she was blonde or brunette. I'm picturing blonde in this made up memory my brain is creating. And Tina Yothers, of course, was from Family Ties. Mm -hmm. She was the younger sister, right? Wow, this is pulling from the archives, Mm -hmm. the 80s, a long time ago. Anyway, yeah, the movie is about her trying out for the Laker Girls, which is a the dance cheer. They're a dance team for the Los Angeles Lakers. It's real terrible, but I was really into real terrible TV movies back then. So as you are now. As I am now, apparently. <laughs> uh, Fred Henderson plays Wallace. Henderson has a staggering 153 acting credits, including a ton of work for Hallmark. He will also be seen in the upcoming Christmas on Cherry Lane. Also also noteworthy, he recently appeared in a new horror movie. What? Keep going. Called Totally Killer, which a good friend of mine who loves this genre of movies recommended. So that's so funny because people who listen to our Patreon will know that I watch a lot of movies via TikTok. Like, Mm -hmm. TikTok shares 
scenes from a movie and I end up watching multiple scenes and I'm like, oh, I've seen the movie. Well, this was one of one, them. Mm. And I actually have this in my watch list, even though I don't watch horror movies. The fact that it's like a throwback to the 80s when yeah. her mom's in high school situation. I kind of am intrigued by it. I know. I think I want to watch it. We should. I uh, This friend of mine said it was pretty good, so... Uh, this movie was filmed in British Columbia, Canada from late August to early September 2023. Are you ready? I'm going to go. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ho, ho. Ho, ho, who? Ho, ho, hold on to your hat because you might be surprised at what I've got to say about this movie. Oh, I love everything about what just happened. Well, pfft. I should have gone first because mine's going to be such a disappointment. And it is simply welcome to Christmas mystery movies. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes. No, that's a good one. Okay. All right. Let's talk about what we liked. Okay. Well, I overall, can I just say, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Me too. I found the experience as a whole to be really enjoyable. I just felt like, oh, I, this movie is like a warm hug of a movie to me. I liked all the parts, even though in the beginning I was like, oh, no, oh, no, this is not going to go well. And then it really came together for me. You thought it wasn't going to go well because David and Heidi didn't get along. You know, it starts off with like, Ugh, who's the Ebenezer who mm -hmm. did this? And then you've got these kids who come in and that are kind of nasty. And I thought, oh, no. And none of that really panned out in the way I was worried it would. Mm-hmm. Agree. I uh, want to agree with you. I really enjoyed this movie. Yeah. I personally thought it was it, it was the fun hunt for the clues uh -huh. led by the kids in this movie that really reeled me in. Are I, you pleasantly surprised by the children's roles in this movie? I thought they were super enjoyable. You know, the storyline was pretty straightforward, but mm -hmm. it was kind of delightful, too. And it kept me entertained from the beginning to the end. I did not fall asleep. But with that said, I was less interested in, like, the backstory of Mistletoe Manor and the attempt to revive the town's historical society. But... It was all tied together nicely at the end. So uh, it's interesting you say that because I, my thoughts were, I thought the event at the house came together quite well at the end, but I spent a lot of time watching this movie second guessing the desire to like revive Mistletoe Manor. I was like, who cares? What are you going to do? Slap some lights on this house? Mm -hmm. That they turned it into a whole event. I really enjoyed I have thoughts on the timing of that event, of course, but <laughs> they've got story time and they've got, you know, hot chocolate and all these other things happening. I thought it came together well, but I agree with you this whole like, oh, Mistletoe Manor. What's special about Mistletoe Manor? I, they didn't have me throughout on that. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I want to talk about some of the stars of this movie. Yes, please. Uh, Erica Sarah and her delightful voice. I loved her voice. I just thought more of that, please. I loved it. I saw in your notes that she does do some voice work, and I think that's perfect for her. I just found her voice really interesting to listen to. I agree. Let me tell you for a second. I was on Reddit last night, and people were talking about this movie. A lot of people didn't really like it because they thought it was going to be like a murdery Christmas movie. Uh -huh. I just don't think Hallmark's ready to go there yet. Um, but a lot of people were saying that Erica Sarah's voice was too gravelly and annoying. And I disagree. Look, I this is like straight up misogyny. Anytime someone says they don't like someone's voice, it's always a woman. It's always a woman. No one's like, I don't like that man's voice. Mm, Nobody yeah. ever says that except for you about the Ford truck guy. I have no idea what you're referring to. <laughs> what Ford truck guy? Hold on. Give me a minute. Batman. Um, Martless. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm short circuiting. <laughs> what is his name? <laughs> the Lego host. Yes. What is his freaking name? Yes, I can't stand his voice. You're right. Jason Bateman. Will Arnett. Sean Hayes, thank you. And Will, Will Arnett. Arnett. Wow. I'm sorry. Will Arnett fans. I, his I love his voice. Crazy. But again, nobody ever says that about men's voice, typically. So uh, go pound sand, Reddit users. <laughs> <laughs> Our other star of this movie, I found Victor Webster as warm and dreamy as ever. I, I just agree. found him a, such a comforting presence. Like, I just was imagining this 
single mom moving to this town, having to start fresh, new job. She's moved her kids. They're not really happy. She's got this whole house to set up. And in comes Victor Webster to save the day in just this, like, quietly strong way. That's really interesting that you say that because there is this certain like machismo that I like about him. I find I'm very drawn to. Uh huh. And I remember specifically in one of the Wedding Veil movies, there was this whole like scene where he like stood up for Ali Sweeney. I can't even remember what it was, but I was like, hello. Mm. I like that. I agree. I really enjoyed him in this movie. And, and, I thought these two were like a nice, sexy pair in a very non-sexy movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, there was just something about him, them together. I loved it. Finally, I'd like to say yay for Linda and Wallace. Oh, I mean, yeah, that was sweet. Like, he goes, I don't need a coffee. I just wanted to come say hi to you. Oh, sweet Wallace. Yeah, that's sweet, I guess. Like, it was sweet. I mean, those uh, Wallace's storyline was, I mean, Linda was just like a side player here in this oh, movie. I just loved Linda. Look, I, I like those supportive characters. Like, you're not on your own. She was on Heidi's side the whole time. I just mm. like she had Heidi's back, and I, I, I really liked Linda. So speaking of the kids in this movie, mm-hmm. I thought Juliet Hawk nailed the th- mopey but sweet teenage daughter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Logan Pierce, who played the little brother, was really cute, too. Uh, I thought they were believable as a brother-sister pair. It was real cute how they were, like, working together to find the clues. And uh, I enjoyed them. I, I agree. They were a nice addition to this movie. And not uh, almost the most compelling storyline of the movie. Agree. Finally, I have some thoughts on Wallace, played by Fred Henderson. There were some things like I really like, like how he was helping the kids and he was engaged in the hunt for the clues and giving them like a little bit of hints and all that stuff. But in contrast, there was no reason for him to keep this big secret from his adult son. None. It was simple. There was a reasonable explanation. There was no need to make it bigger than what it was. You would have thought there had been an actual murder in this house, not this was a p- place of sad memories for me. That's all you needed to say. Totally. Yeah, he was just like, leave it alone, David. It's like, well, well what? Excuse yeah, me? are there bones buried in the shed, <laughs> sir? Exactly. Exactly. Um, I have one little scene that made me swoon a little bit. Oh. And, you know, the the movies on the Mystery Channel – Movies and Mysteries, oh, it's like it escaped me for a second. Um, they don't typically make me swoon. But there was a scene when David kisses Heidi's hand under Aww. the mistletoe. Aww. I was like, that's that's all you got to do, guys. That's it. It's that simple. That simple. Just watch this movie. Be like Victor Webster. <laughs> it's that easy, y'all. All right. Let's talk about what we wished for. Okay. Even though I loved the event at the house... They needed to change the timing. Nobody's coming to a community event on Christmas Eve. No, nope. Nobody's going to be there. Nobody's bailing on their family plans to come to this community event. They're just not. And I don't fully understand why Hallmark is so committed. I guess because it creates this like sense of urgency, like we got to get it done by Christmas Eve. Well, how about we got to get it done by December 1st so we have a full season to actually capitalize on this event. Right. How is one night helping you? And then I I think it carries as much weight launching this on December 1st. And then, like, look what you're going to have for this whole season. Right. I agree with you. Okay. I agree with you. And tell us if we're wrong. Because maybe you and I are the only ones who do stuff with families on Christmas Eve. <laughs> maybe. Look, and I think also... Let me say that I think when you potentially are married or you're in a partnership and you have multiple extended families to deal with, that's when Christmas Eve between like my family and my husband's family and all the grandparents, like we have to do something on Christmas Eve and we have to do something on Christmas Day to satisfy all of those needs. Right. But maybe some people are like looking around for something to do Christmas Eve. Maybe. Mm. I need to know about it. Mm Mm-hmm. When I was told you earlier that I didn't like love the whole backstory on Mistletoe Manor, and I think this is why. I would have cared more about the history of the house if we were given some sort of visual backstory on it, maybe. Instead of just that, like, weird black and white print. There's that. 
And then Heidi and David are at the library researching it and they're reading out loud about it. Like, I think it would have been a better opportunity to show us what it looked like. Or, or when Wallace comes to town and he visits the house, do you remember that? He like walks up to the house and he's yeah, like, like his in. flashback memories. Uh, give me a childhood memory, uh-huh. something to show how important the house was to uh-huh. him or the community or something. L- dress the house up, make it look old timey, something. Mm-hmm. Yes. I would have cared more. Yes, even take that like final end scene where it's dressed up and like sepia tone it in Wallace's memory. Like that's exactly. good. That would work for me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. My next is a bunch of questions. Okay. Who moves into a new house and doesn't explore it? That is in my did you see that? Okay. I apologize. <laughs> You don't have to apologize. But. How do are they like, oh, there's a carriage house. Oh, there's all of these things. The first thing I do is I'm going to walk through that house. I'm going to learn how many rooms are there totally. and what stuff has been left behind. I'm not going to constantly be surprised by turning a corner and finding a giant nutcracker staring at me. <laughs> like you, there is no chance I wouldn't have gone in that carriage house. I would have been able to just let it sit out there for days unopened. Zero. I agree. Yep. Got to know what's in it. Me too. Well, I'll I'll say, here's my did you see that? It just goes nicely here. When the power goes out and the, Heidi and the kids, I think they're in the basement. Mm-hmm. It's where that big nutcracker, where is that? Where it's are we talking about? unclear in the house to me where it is. The hallway they're walking down is just filled with dusty cobwebs. I'm like, nobody cleaned this house before you moved into it? Right. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm-hmm. Anyway, do you want to go on with your questions? Um, My next question is, why is this movie called Mystery on Mistletoe Lane and not Mystery at Mistletoe Manor? Very good question. I don't think they lived on Mistletoe Lane, did they? Maybe they did, but there's nothing about the street. There's no discussion of the street. We meet the neighbor across the street who happens to also be married to the mayor. I just thought the movie was poorly named. Mystery at Mistletoe Manor. How hard? Uh, Maybe they had bigger plans for the event and then production. They were like, mm. Got to be one house. We got the budget to decorate one house, y'all. And finally, how is the former director of the Historical Society so available to basically be the co-director of the Historical Society unpaid? Yeah, I don't understand. Why did he leave the position? It was never clear, right? Well, he's going to start his renovation business. Oh, really? I I like completely missed that. I think so. But he doesn't appear to be doing much of that. Hmm. Interesting. Here's the final thing I wished for. Mm -hmm. The threat of Heidi losing her job at the Historical Society based on the turnout at the hashtag tribute tree was totally unnecessary, as was the town council meeting. I hear a but. No but. No, I have have (laughs) additional information. Yes. I just thought it was dumb. Like, here's an unwarranted obstacle that we're going to place in your way to, like, jeopardize the potential of Heidi and David maybe getting together. It just was nonsense. I mean, it's nonsense for the Hallmark Channel, but not for movies and mysteries. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, agree. I thought it was, you're going to hire this person and then give her two weeks to make a difference. Come on. Yeah, and I don't even think there was no assignment. Like, you have to come turn the historical society around in two weeks before Christmas. Was there? No, that was unclear. It was, I think you're right. It, this event didn't go well, therefore, you fired. Also, at the historical society town hall meeting, there are no less than 10 Christmas trees between the hallway and the interior of the meeting. And you're telling me that this is a town that's going to vote against her Mistletoe Manor event? <laughs> yeah, all right. No. You ready for Did You See That? I am. Did you know there was a Nora Jones song in this movie? No, didn't even hear it. While they're ice skating. It's called Christmas Glow, and I only know that because Nora Jones herself posted about it on Twitter. Did she record that song for this movie, or is it an old song? I don't know. Okay. (laughs) Speaking of music, I loved that old record player cabinet thing. Oh, yeah. Someone in my family had one at one point because, like, it brings me a lot of joy to see it. I I can't tell you who had one, but I know someone had one. And I kind of wish I had one for my house. Like, if I had room for it, I think it'd be so cool. Yes. I love that. By the way, Nora Jones' Christmas Glow came out in 2021, so it was not written for this movie. Got it. 
one tiny did you see that they're handing out flyers about their event, flyers and cookies to promote mm-hmm. Mistletoe Manor. Mm-hmm. And then they just all go skating. And I was like, were they just standing there in skates handing out flyers? And I said <laughs> that out loud. My husband's like, no, they went and put on skates. And I was like, the scene goes from them walking away directly onto the ice. So maybe they did go put on skates, but it certainly seems like they were just booted up and ready to go. <laughs> booted up. That's funny. The scene where Heidi is putting out Christmas decorations at their house, she hasn't unpacked anything else, but she chooses to unpack the Christmas decor, Mm -hmm. which I think she was doing because, like, the kids were coming and she Mm -hmm. wanted to make it feel, like, homey and special to them. But, like, she has these existing shelves and, like, just, like, the perfect box of Christmas decorations that just fit perfectly right on all these (laughs) shelves. Like, come on. We all know it needs a little finessing. You can't just, like, put it up there and be done. Right. She had the perfect staging for every one of those shelves. Exactly. Exactly. When they go out to the restaurant, he's, I don't know, they're picking, she's picking up dinner and he's eating chowder and they share a spoon to eat the chowder. And tell me why I'm so grossed out by that. But yeah, not I didn't a kiss. love that. I uh, agree. That's a good point. I don't want to eat off of anybody's soup spoon. No, that's just. I like literally makes my stomach turn thinking about it. <laughs> it's so gross. It did. Although I was like, oh, I kind of want some chowder. <laughs> well, who's going to Massachusetts this week? It's me. And I, you bet I'm going to get some chowder. I have two more. Did you see that? Please. When Wallace walks up to visit Mistletoe Manor, there is the most offensive digital snow lined roof. Mm. It almost looks mm. cartoonish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so bad. Mm-hmm, did you mm-hmm. see it? I did. I almost rewound it, but I did not. It, but yes. It, it looked like a cartoon. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, what am I looking at here? This is <laughs> awful. It's August. Awful. It's like Disney snow where they have like the plastic tufts of snow over the castle. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what it looked like. Exactly. And my final, did you see that? Heidi talks about this Christmas tree being seen through the windows at the Historical Society and it's going to draw people to come in. Well, the night of their party, the windows are covered with, like, sheer window coverings, but still covered. I'm like, no one can see your awesome tree with the drapes closed. If you're trying to get people, open your drapes. Excellent point. Also, you alluded to it before, but during the, when the tribute tree takes off, Heidi shows up and there's all these people there. And Linda's like, they saw something called a hashtag. And... Once again, I am begging you to ask one of the under 25-year-olds on your production staff how to talk about social media in a way that doesn't make you sound like a bozo. Well, even one of those kids could have been like, yo, Linda, they just want to dumb it down for the, the audience that doesn't understand it. Yeah, but just, they saw it on social media. They saw something called a hashtag. They didn't see the hashtag. The hashtag <laughs> is what made it go viral, but they didn't. It's, it's all I'm saying. Sometimes... You talk about niche things and they drive me crazy. I know. I know. Let's rate this bad boy. 4.25 stars. I gave it four stars. I thought it was a great family movie. Like anybody could watch this, you know, like the family could sit down and watch this cute movie. I agree. I think we are ramping up to some stronger movies after a handful of misses this season so far. Mm -hmm. If Victor Webster is your favorite Hallmark dude, guess what? We need you to open up the Apple Podcast app and leave us a five-star rating and review, letting everybody know how much you love Girls Gone Hallmark. We'll be back later this week with a review of Christmas Island. Come back for that. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Bye.